study of the dancing professor. Today we're here at Van Nuys Airport and we're actually going to interview a real commercial pilot to understand the logistics and the challenges of being a pilot and how that relates to human factors. And here's our pilot right now. Let's go. Hi everyone, we're here interviewing pilot Nadim Elhouri on the importance of situation awareness, multitasking, and workload, and how that affects his job as being a pilot. Hi Nadim, how are you? Good, how are you? Great. Um, so my first question for you is, what would you say um, are the biggest challenges of being a pilot? Well, being a pilot, uh, uh, most of the challenges I'm going to talk about uh, in, in personal view, actually. Um, I say, I say um, divided attention, uh, multitasking, and uh, workload sometimes. Uh, this is most of the challenging parts we face. Okay, great. So um, just so that our viewers understand, right, uh, we have two main types of attention, right? The first type of attention we have is called selective attention, which is when we focus only on one thing and we're dedicating all of our cognitive resources towards that one thing. Divided attention, of course, is, as it sounds, is to divide your attention and we end up dividing our attention when we do things like multitasking. So naturally, if you have two things to focus on, then you have to dedicate half of your cognitive resources to one and half to the other one. And I can imagine that um, as a pilot, you have to divide your attention among various things. So can you tell us a little bit about the types of things that uh, occur in a regular flight or like when you most have to divide your attention? Let's say we're flying, we're in a cruising flight, uh, going from point A to point B. Um, let's say you know, it's a clear day, it's a beautiful day outside. Um, we, we're basically monitoring uh, the gauges of the plane. Um, we're making sure everything is fine in the flight. And uh, meanwhile, we need to scan for traffic um, because there is traffic, yes, in the air, there is traffic of planes too. So basically, this is a small div division of attention here. Uh, we need to, 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 to take care of because we're responsible of that too. Um, and how do you yes. monitor this um, traffic in the air? How does that work? So, um, in addition to our instrument on board of the plane, uh, we have a detector uh, of uh, traffic around us in the plane. Plus, we need just visually scan. You look outside the window and you're scanning. So basically, that's in, in higher scale of flying a plane. But now, if you're a student and you're like going for a training, uh, most of the work is div division of attention because you're doing, let's say, maneuvers related to ground, uh, to the ground. So you have to look uh, to your gauges in the same time, your instrument, and looking for the traffic in the same time, and looking to your point, which is has to be your reference point while you're doing training as a student. So there's a lot of divided attention here. So in the high level and small level. Great. So. Um Besides looking at your gauges, right, so it seems like there are two ways that you can fly. You can fly visually or you can fly based on um, instruments. Instrument. So can you explain a little bit about the difference between those? Uh, most of the airline the aviation, they, they fly based on instrument, which is instrument flight rules. Um, they all depends on their instrument and uh, they, they do a flight plan and they fly based on this. Now, what is an instrument? I'm sorry. Can you can uh, you use another word besides instrument? Instrument is the gauges we have. You can check it out here. Okay. See these are gauges. This is called instrument flight. Okay. So basically, you don't look outside. I see. You okay. Just you're looking here. You're following a flight plan. It's like a GPS in the car. You go. You put it like Got from it. A to B. You just load it. This is what happened in the plane. You load it in your GPS, and you fly it. Basically, the autopilot does it for you, but you have to monitor everything. And the other side is the visual flying, which is, you know, uh, the airline doesn't do that. Uh, like, it's for fun or pilots here and there, they do it. Okay, they just fly looking outside, uh, points to points, checkpoints, that's, that's it. So we have this concept that we know of as situation awareness, right? And if you think about it, just, you know, literally speaking, it's being aware of your surroundings, of your situation, but this is a really huge factor. Um, 
and critical point for human factors, right? So we know that human factor psychology, uh, you know, was born or got its evolution uh, during the world, world War, right? The first one and then the second one. And um, a lot of the reasons that we start doing testing on technology is specifically because pilots, such as yourself, right, um, they were having difficulties performing in very highly stressful situations, right? So situation awareness depends on three things. The first thing is uh, perception of your environment, right? What's going on? what's happening in your environment. Um, the second thing is comprehension for what to do, right? Comprehension is the situation now, are you understanding what you're perceiving, right? All of these things. And of course, at times of high stress or in the middle of a war, uh, that becomes very problematic. Um, and then the last thing is projection, right? So now that you see what's going on, you understand it, what are you gonna do next, right? So based on what you're gonna do next, then you have to take some sort of decision. Right. So um, can you tell me a little bit about like uh, an instance where you feel like decision making is critical or like when it's hardest to make a decision, maybe like during takeoff or landing or something like that? Yeah. Briefly to start, I'm just going to tell you that there's a lot of stuff can affect the situational awareness. Great. And even even before you go fly, you know, if you're not feeling well, just don't go fly. Mm -hmm. So briefly, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about it because we're going to talk about, you know, um, what basically we do in the air and how you know we we'll, we basically deal with this situation. Um, let's say it's a comfortable day. It's a good day to fly. Um, I feel fine. I'm not. I'm not stressed out. I don't have any external pressure. Like she mentioned, that there's external pressure can happen. Um, so let's say we're flying and we we we're facing a storm in front of us. Um, so we should be aware. Um, so there's two ways we can we can check that we have a st storm on board of the plane. We have uh, a radar, weather radar. We can check there's a storm in front of us, uh, or we can ask uh, the station service station weather service station on the ground. It will tell us give us will give us information about that. So now as awareness here, what happened is we need to be aware what's coming. We need to know uh, if we go in in this storm uh, as decision making here we need to take to like we need to identify that if we go in this storm what's going to happen is we have we have probability we're going to have structure damage on the plane so following the steps we use briefly like what are the we, steps called is there like a certain checklist i know you were mentioning well, a checklist yeah, before it's it's kind of like there's no checklist, but like it's it depends on the situation. It's like you need first to identify the situation. You need to like to, to identify the hazard and how to go around it. So you should identify. Um, you, you know you need to see what's gonna cause damage to this plane, and you, you need to take action by avoiding or diverting around this thunderstorm. Got it. So and you need to, to be aware if you're not if you're not let's say you know, you're not feel you're not comfortable, or you didn't have enough sleep, or you know, uh, right? Totally. So you cannot you cannot function very well, and there's a lot of incident happen in this life uh, by by not being aware and not taking a good decision. I understand that in order to navigate traffic, right, you have to engage in a lot of communication with the air traffic control tower, right? And um, again, this sort of leads back to this division of attention, multitasking, right? Besides monitoring your gauges, checking outside, you know, visually, you also have to constantly be on the radio communicating to the air traffic control. So um, how do you feel like communication affects your job? From point A to point B, from airport destination, you know, uh, we, we need to communicate with uh, everyone on the ground, um, you know, to have s sort of clearance, uh, to clear us to go from A to B, you know, and uh, from the departure area. So communication, if it's not clear between us and them, it can cause like, you know, uh, very close, like collisions, you know, and, uh, so you were mentioning to me pr uh, previously that sometimes um, when you're talking on the radio, it's a one-way uh, s like frequency. Correct. So if someone else is trying to talk to you at the same you time, you can block. Yeah. You can, yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, basically, radio in the plane works in in one way. So when you're transmitting, the other should be receiving and listening. So when you finish transmitting, um, you the other side has to transmit back. It's not like the phone. It's like open two ways. So, and most of the time, uh, airplanes block each other by cutting the others, by trying to transmit 
So the way we use is um, if someone is transmitting, you have to wait for him to finish and start transmitting again and tell the, the ground what you need. Got it. Yeah, so I can, you can imagine that that's so much stress on the um, ATC as well. Um, great. So I know that you're going to show us some um, exciting simulations, right? So is that okay if we set yeah, that up? Yeah, sure. Right, cool. Okay, now uh, we're going to show you uh, um, an approach simulating to Burbank uh, with the cloud, basically showing the workload uh, and uh, uh, what do we do in the plane. All right, now we're gonna start, there you go. So as we see, uh, we're coming to land in Burbank and we're following a specific route. Uh, we use, we have plates we use to land. Uh, we're following this route because we have now a cloud. As we mentioned before, we're gonna be flying on the instrument and we're using our instrument to land. Uh, so two phases, we have a lot of workload as a pilot, mainly uh, at the takeoff and at the landings. Uh, they're very, very critical phases. Uh, and uh, we need to be like aware in the same time around aware for what, what are we doing, actually. Uh, as we see, we have some weather here. Uh, I'm following my instruments. Uh, we, we're approaching to Burbank. Um, so now as we see we have uh, to run some stuff like we have to put our landing gears down we have to put our flaps down so we're preparing for the landing so uh, all this stuff has to happen in like uh, some specific speed we should be faster doing this uh, yeah so um, now in case we face any bad weather or like we have really bad weather, um, as a decision making, we should take that uh, this is not the suitable area for us to land, it's not safe. So we can cause damages for the plane. There is a big pro possibility to crash the plane. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave this area and go check different area to land. Yes. Uh, okay. Land, go. Make clouds. You like three things. All right, now we're gonna go to. It's just a little bit slow. The planes that we're gonna take forever. All right. So now, as we established uh, on the runway, we can see the runway, but there is probability here. We have to put in mind. Um, we always have to have a backup. So we're going to land. We reach a point that if we can see the runway we go to land if we have some sort of um, cloud blocking our visual, visual to land we have to go around and go uh, to our alternate airport and uh, it, should, it should be there, it should be better there uh, a cloud environment situation for us to land All right now as we see here we're approaching Burbank we see the runway we need to descend a little bit. So if we see we have instrument gauge we're following, we're a little bit high, it showed the indication show we're, we're higher than that. So we go down, we follow our gauges. Just to show you guys like how, you know, how, like how much stuff we have to do and like work at. Now, there's some planes they have autopilot, definitely it makes their life easier. But if you're flying manually, it's kind of a little bit uh, hard and tough to think about everything and like do everything and check the backup plan here because the backup plan uh, to take off and turn and go to the other alternate too, you have to set it up in the meanwhile you're doing this approach. So it's all workload here and like you know, it's all decision making. Do we go to land or we don't go to land?
very much, Nadim, for showing us how you actually simulate a flight. And thank you for explaining all of the things that impact your job. So hopefully that gives everyone a better idea. So if you want to be a pilot, get ready, you know, to be stressed and overloaded and multitask a lot. Thank you so much, Nadim. Thank you. Thank you.